Thank you for being here. Welcome, guys. Today, John, Pat, and I will talk about the Viva Connection Extensibility Overviews. How do you work and create the extensibility cards for Viva Connection Dashboard? So let's talk about the power of the custom card and how SharePoint Framework can help you building uh, uh, custom cards for Viva Connection Dashboard. Uh, as we saw before, and now John was showing right now during the demo, in the mobile app, you can have a card and then you can have a quick view and then the quick view can deep link either in an app that can be a web or it can be a Teams uh, application. And all of these capabilities are available for developers so that developers can go and create uh, custom cards for Viva Connections. So let's talk about the components and the parts of uh, uh, a custom card that the developer can use to build extensions for Viva Connection Dashboard. So the card is the first experience and it's basically the only one that is required. As a developer, you basically use the card to be able to uh, provide a quick glance or a quick set of actions that the user can go and can operate uh, in order to make his or her job done or be able to uh, consume the information that he or she needs. Uh, and as I said a second ago, this is the only required part of your uh, custom component. If you create a custom component for Viva Connection Dashboard, the card is the only one that you need to do in order to be able to surface and exist as part of the dashboard experience. You can also create a quick view after that, which is basically an other experience, a more immersive experience that you can provide to the end user by clicking on the card itself or by clicking on one of the buttons that can be available as part of your card. Uh, it, just like John said before, uh, by using the power of adaptive card, it provides additional actions or additional information that the user can consume. And this is an optional experience. Uh, you can build your solution that is just a card. You can build your solution that is a card and a quick view, and you can select the interaction or the transition between the card and the quick view by being there a button or by clicking on the card itself. And then the last thing that you can do as a developer, you can also be able to uh, deep link an existing application, being a page, an external page, modern page, or a themes application of as part of your uh, custom card experience. Again, you can select, you can decide which kind of uh, uh, app to link and the, the, the dashboard author can then decide how to trigger that experience were available, either by clicking on the button or by clicking on the card itself. And like the quick view, this is also an optional experience that you can provide here. Um, as I was saying before, we were providing different kind of first-party experiences. We talked about the Teams app, we talked about the card designer and the SharePoint pages. We will also have other first-party experiences and second-party experiences, ability to connect with tasks and other functionalities that we provide as Microsoft. And of course, we have the ACES or Adaptive Card Extensions. And those are new type of SPFX components that has been created and designed primarily and specifically for a user experience inside the Weaver Connection Dashboard. Um, as I said before, they work both in Dashboard as well as modern pages. We are still discussing if they are showing in modern pages just as part of the Dashboard experience in modern pages. Oh, and when I say dashboard experience in modern pages, basically we are creating a new web part called dashboard that will surface the entire dashboard that you can put inside pages. But we are also considering to put the card as isolated components together with web parts inside the pages as well. Again, uh, the decision has not been finalized yet, but it's something that we are actively considering. The adaptive card extensions can be used uh, or are used uh, so that you can build experiences like cards and quick view as part of the dashboard. And it's just another SharePoint Framework component, which means that all the goodness and all the capabilities that SharePoint Framework provides will be available here. So for example, I don't know, do you want to consume APIs that are ex being exposed by Microsoft Graph or any other uh, application that has been registered in AD? In the same way you're doing that with WebPart, you will be able to consume that and surface that information as part of the card or as part of the quick view experience. Um, there is also an interesting uh, thing to mention here. So as John said during the demo, uh, because the card it is using native rendering in uh, devices and experiences that supports, for example, the mobile experience, uh, we had to speak and select a framework so that uh, we can basically transition from web view to, re to native rendering uh, 
uh, depending on the case. So for that, and for that reason, we basically created kind of a separation between uh, uh, data and UX. So for the UX, you, we will use uh, adaptive card for the quick view. And for the card itself, we still use adaptive card under the cover to build the card, to build the card experience. But the card experience uh, would not be something that the developer can change in terms of UX. And basically what I mean by that is that, uh, I'll talk about it in a second, uh, we will be able to have provide some kind of templating uh, that the developer can use to uh, instruct the framework on how to build the card at runtime. So as I said before, you have the ability to have dynamic title and icon, you have the ability to have the descriptions, you have the ability to have buttons uh, that can be static or dynamic which means that you can basically change the button at runtime, you can consume data and surface this data at the button at runtime. Uh, this is one of, these are kind of uh, um, attributes of the card that the developer can uh, uh, set either at runtime or at code time, and the framework will use this information to build the card. When we go to the quick view, then the uh, developer will be able to provide the entire uh, adaptive card JSON payload, and we will basically render natively or in web, depending on where the dashboard is surfacing, uh, the uh, adaptive card JSON. And then you can link to an external application. So well, let's talk about the card anatomy. Uh, when you create a card, you can you have the ability to have views which describe the content of the card or a quick view state. And uh, you can have different views for, but at the beginning we will have three different kind of views, but you can have more later. And depending on the view, you will be able to have different kind of attributes available uh, at runtime or at code. So for example, you can have an icon property. The icon property is available everywhere. Uh, the title is also available on all of the views. Uh, the primary text as well, but if for example, you have only image URL, the image URL is an, an attribute or a property that is only available in uh, the card view, uh, kind of uh, the image card view, and the description is only available in the other view, which, uh, sorry, I had a glitch in my, in my uh, demo, or in my deck where basically um, it's only available on one of the card views. And when we go back to the quick view instead, we will be able to give you a method that you can use to basically feed uh, the runtime to the entire JSON uh, adaptive card JSON payload. And in that case, we will just like John showed it in the demo before, uh, the framework will be able, the runtime will be able to take a look at the JSON and render the JSON either natively if you are in a mobile or uh, in the web view if you are in a modern page or in another devices that support web view. Those are some of the example of the three views and the card templates that are available of, uh, out of the box. As I said, this is the beginning. By the time we launch, we will, we'll, I don't know if we will have more or less, but for sure, by the time that Viva Connections and the dashboard evolves, uh, we are planning to have more kind of templates and views that you can use to build your solutions for Viva Connection dashboard. And demo time. John, do you want to show us how to build that? Or do we want to ask some question first? Veza, up to you. As we have 10 minutes, let's go to John's demo and, and spend time on the coach uh, explaining how these things are being built. Yeah, I was trying to be in the 10 minutes window, sure. so it's a <laughs> decent job. Go. Yeah, all right. So just get started. It's just like using um, SPFX to create web parts um, or other um, extensions that we um, kind of covered. So you have to install. Um, the Microsoft uh, SharePoint generator. Um, and then all you have to do is run yo at Microsoft SharePoint, uh, run with um, plus beta. These are currently beta um, features. This will run. Me, uh, run your window. Okay, uh, here we go. Um, so you'll just a familiar uh, yeoman prompt, except we'll have a new option down here. Um, called the Adaptive Card Extension. We'll select that, give it a name, call it um, Hello World, go to some default options. So select SharePoint Online. So Viva Connections will only be available um, with SharePoint Online. Uh, select the Adaptive Card Extension. And like Luca um, had demonstrated, we have three current templates that you can use um, for the card view. We may expand, uh, expand them more. And you go ahead and select um, them from here to have them scaffolded automatically for you. 
So basic image and primary. I'll select primary, name. This will um, scaffold, it'll go and install um, all the various packages. I'll kind of skip this um, for now. But this is what the scaffolding will end up um, looking like. Um, so this is what a the anatomy of a depth and card extension. It'll look really familiar to web parts. We have our adaptive card extension class here, um, different props and states. These are um, a couple new things that allow us um, to be able to um, ensure that the right uh, types are enforced throughout the card and the quick view. Um, there's a couple things that are interesting here um, to note. We have this notion of a card navigator and a quick view navigator. Um, I'll expand on this a little bit later um, in the, the advanced demo, um, but this allows um, us to manage the different views that you have between um, the cards. So you can have multiple card views that you kind of switch between and um, navigate through as a stack. You can also have multiple quick views um, as well. We're also going to, by default, scaffold uh, the property pane as a Webpack chunk. Um, what we found is that um, a lot of Webpack code ends up being a part of the property pane, and so it's nice um, to have it by default chunk. And so this is a, um, a new pattern that we will um, by default scaffold. Um, and so there's not really a lot going on here um, for the uh, basic card. I'll just go ahead and we'll do a bit of serve. One thing to, to note, if you're familiar with um, the SharePoint framework, is that adaptive card extensions will not work with the local workbench. Um, we're sort of moving away from that. And so um, the support for being able to use Gulp Serve um, will only work uh, within um, SharePoint, um, either on a page um, using the debug portion parameter or within the, the hosting workbench. So I'm running Gulp Serve now. Fresh. The warning goes away. I'm be able to add my uh, Hello World card. We also, by default, scaffold into a new um, group called Dashboard. This will be where all the different um, cards will be um, on the workbench. Click Hello World, and here is my uh, adaptive card extension. So you won't be able to interact with it while you're in edit mode. So we'll have to switch to preview. And uh, when in preview, then we can go ahead and um, interact with the, the card. So this is what, by default, we scaffold for the um, the basic primary text card view. Um, and so we'll, we'll have some default properties here, um, being able to change the card icon up. Um, currently, we support uh, only uh, image URLs for the card icon, um, but later on um, in the beta, we'll be able to ch we'll be changing this up to um, being able to select fluent icons um, that will render natively and be themable. Okay. Cool. Thanks, John. So one thing to mention here in terms of availability, as we said before, and as Veza mentioned, uh, you sign for the private beta program and you will be able to get access to uh, internal version of 113 where this is available. However, we are also working to release 113 beta as part of the new way that we are now taking for releasing a public version of SharePoint framework where we will release a beta version first, then we will release a release candidate, and then a final release. And in the beta version, once that has been released, the idea is that you will be able to access the uh, bits for adaptive card extensions from there. Uh, just like John mentioned before, because we also need to do some work on your tenancy, one of the things that we are working is to be able to enable card development in the workbench so that when uh, 113 beta will be available publicly, you will be able to uh, do what John did similarly to what John did right now, which basically is the ability to uh, create a card using 113 beta and surface that in the workbench. Yep. Yeah, so we had a more uh, advanced code demo uh, prepared, but we're running a bit short on time. Um, so real quick, what I do want to um, to cover is uh, what you end up getting once you sign up with the, the private beta and being able to um, actually get access to the GitHub. 
So once you um, have registered for the, the private beta uh, and you get added to uh, the GitHub, you'll be able to have access to um, the, the GitHub where we'll be tracking all the issues. Um, additionally, we'll have a wiki here that covers all the different hands-on labs that go um, in depth about all the different function, new functionality that's going to be available. Um, we're also tracking release notes um, as we release additional private beta um, packages to the private feed um, here. What we, uh, like Luca mentioned, um, with SPFX 113, we, we do plan on moving eventually to a, a public beta um, later this summer. And so once 1.13 um, beta gets released, we'll be making the ACE functionality available um, publicly as well. Um, although, so that what that means is that you'll be able to use um, and create the adaptive card extensions on the workbench. Um, you still have to go through the signup process if you want to use the rest of the Viva Connection functionality, um, like being able to create a dashboard on your comp site or on your home site um, and being able to interact with any additional uh, parts we make available through Viva Connections. Cool.